What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of JAR. JAR, for those of you that may be new, stands for Joe. And Amy. Review. It's our weekly show where we review the magic stories as they're posted on Wizards' website. And this week, we are back with more M19 story for part two, week two of eight, with Chronicle of Bolas, The First Lesson, once again, by Kate Elliott. My quick review at the beginning of this one is, I really enjoyed this one. I thought that it... Uh, followed along nicely from last week. We got a lot more information about the surviving Elder Dragons, Ugin and Bolas definitely included. We got more of Yasova and her granddaughters. So, yeah, I think even if you missed last week, I think this one's still a really good one. I would recommend you read last week's anyway, but but for this one, I recommend you read this one. What, about, what were your thoughts? I firmly agree with everything you said. Look at that. So that's our quick review at the beginning. We give you that. If you want to check the description down below, we will have the link to the, the actual article on uh, the website itself so that if you have not read the story yet, you can go do that because as we always say, this is a review show. We review, we do not summarize. So feel free to go read that for yourself and then come back here and talk with us about it because we would love to hear all of your opinions and responses to anything and everything that we are about to say. Speaking of which... Onto the full review itself, I wanted to quickly uh, say at the beginning here, the this is Chronicle of Bolas, the first lesson. Last week was Chronicle of Bolas, the twins, or twins. I like that. I like that we're back to secondary titles, right? Or subtitles, or whatever you want to call it, okay. that are kind of overarching for the story. I, I missed that. With... Um, Return to Dominaria, there weren't any. It was Return to Dominaria episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, that's not to disparage anybody. That's their choice and that's fine. I just, I noticed now that we've gotten them back again, I missed that. Because there's a really good opportunity to give kind of an overarching theme to the story so that you have a general idea when you go in of what that okay. title might mean. But when you leave, you can look back at it and say to yourself, Oh, that's what it was for, right? right? And because it can have dual meanings, tri meanings, whatever you want to call it. Like there can be multiple meanings to the title, and I think that it gives a lot to it. And so I really enjoyed that. The t I really enjoy that the titles are back, uh, and I look forward to seeing what the other six are titled. But yeah, I I would say uh, one of the old things uh, from reading the stories that used to be really great um, is being able to determine what they meant by the title. Yep. The, the different things that they meant by the title. Mm -hmm. And possibly even the things that they didn't know they meant by the title. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, when, when that was the title they picked, um, there might not have been that thought in their minds about that specific meaning, but it's something that, as viewers, we were able to catch. Or not viewers, but consumers of the media. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I'll agree with that. And and I, I don't know necessarily that this story and the last story had too many meanings for the titles, but um, I, I do like that the possibility now exists again for that to be a thing. Well, we talked about it last week with the twins, the twins obviously referred to Ugin and Nickel, but it also referred to um, Neva and Batia. So you have that parallel there where, you, like I said, it could mean more than one thing. And it, in that case, it did, and it referenced the parallel between the people hearing the stories and or telling the stories and the stories themselves that are being told. Oh, okay. Um, and so on to this week's story in particular... Uh, we have, once again, we are following along with Neva, Batia, and uh, Yasova Dragonclaw, uh, the grandmother, as they go on their journey. At this point, we now know they are trying to find Ugin's uh, grave, because that's where they were told to go last week. And they come across, um, I have his name, it's on here somewhere, Taijin, who is fleeing from a member of Ojitai's brood that they were able to see flying around, which led to the first of many great characterization instances in this story that I noticed. And that's that 
or that I that I wanted to point out, I should say, because I'm sure everyone noticed it. We were talking about it ourselves. Okay. Um, but something that I wanted to point out, <clears throat> because you have Neva and Batia and Yasova talking about the Ojitai Brood and commenting on why is that dragon here? You know, maybe it's lost. And <clears throat> Yasova says, no, they are, that's an Ojitai Brood. They are entirely too intelligent to just be lost or to have wandered into this area. And Neva says, wait, dragons can be intelligent. They can be more than just hungry. And that's a really good use of the characterization of those two broods of dragon, but also of the color pie. Because Atarka is red-green and Ojitai is white-blue. And when you look at those color combinations, that's truly what the, the difference between them is. You know, the feral anger. I mean, think of the, the guilds behind us that we're talking about, right? That's Gruul versus Azorius. Azorius are the lawmakers, the kind of boring, um, like, bureaucrat types. And Gruul are the fighters, the angry, you know, beat em up fighters. And so bringing that over to the dragons themselves, I really enjoyed seeing that and having it being told or shown to us, I should say, right? I mean, it's told through the words that the, the young ladies are using and that Yasova is using, but it's shown to us in the way that they're discussing the dragons and that they're experiencing the world around them. So I, I don't know. I really appreciated that, that particular piece of characterization. Speaking of characterization, I also liked how we got a lot more about Neva here, um, where we get to see her talking about, um, she even says, I don't care about the old stories. I'm a hunter. I don't have to worry about that. And so it's more parallels to the dragons themselves, right? She grew up under the Atarka lens, but, and, and so doesn't care about the old stories about Ojitai's dragons and etc. And we even get to see that later on in the story, as the first lesson, right, is the name of the story. But we get to see that later on in the story with um, Nicol Bolas and Ugin as well. Chromium Palladium Moors as well. It's, it's a thread that gets, it begins here with the twins and Yasova and just gets woven through and is used about four or five more times. I, I loved that. But it's not um, repetitive, boring... Or, I don't know, it's not beating us over the head. Yeah. It's just a cohesive running theme that runs. It's, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's unique each and every time that it's used, and yet, if you look back on it, or maybe you noticed it immediately at the time that you read it, you can see where it weaves together and how it all connects. That all of these different characters... I don't want to say that they fall into one camp or the other because that's blatantly untrue, but but you still could look at them and compare and contrast them to one another in that way. And I like that. I think that's a really cool and clever way of having this just this one story be told. Um, and it, like I said, it, it kind of wove throughout, and it because there was that such such a strong through line of that characterization, it, it kept my interest all the way through, which, again, just goes to the fact that we enjoyed the story and we thought it was a good one, right? I mean, it, it, it kept our interest from start to finish and we thought it was a really good one. Um, also, once we get to the stories themselves, the story itself that Taijin is telling, which is being told from Ugin's perspective, um, we get some answers from last week which is very, I think, new for, for the stories. Usually it's like, hey, we're going to be doing a multi-week story, so you're not getting your answers until the last two weeks. You know, we're going to build up question after question after question after question, and then we're going to answer them all at the end, right? This one I didn't think did that. I think last week we had questions, and we yeah. brought them up, and we, we took guesses, and... Turns out most of them were correct, which either leads me to believe that we are amazing or more likely that they were 
Kate did Nothing a very it. well. Kate did a very good job of of kind of um, I can't think of the word, but but uh, foreshadowing it, I guess, making it somewhat obvious of what's gonna happen. Um, at um, least but, if you or at the very least, like putting us in the right mindset to be able to <clears throat> conclude on our own. Yeah. And so what I'm referring to, for if you need examples, is the fact that uh, Ugin and Nickel, we talked about last week, they each named each other. That was Amy's point, was that whereas all the other dragons named themselves, Ugin and Nickel named one another. And Ugin specifically confirms that this week and says that they did in fact do that. They named one another. And... I believe I was the one who had mentioned, but you can go back and watch last week and see if I'm wrong and I'm, I'm improperly characterizing something that Amy said. But I believe it was me who, who commented on the fact that uh, they each only had one name and they were twins inside of one egg, whereas all the other dragons had two names that they gave themselves because they were all in one egg each. And this week it was confirmed. Yes, in fact, they, since they both came from the same egg... There were still two names for that egg. It's just that Ugin took one and Bolas or Nickel, excuse me, took the other. And then again, the third thing was when I believe it was me again, but again, I could be wrong. Go check last week. Um, but when we referenced the fact that where does Bolas come from? And I was really interested in seeing where Bolas came from. Is it a name that he gained? Is it a name that he gave to himself? And we find out this week that it was, in fact, a name that he gave to himself in a way, in his own way, to kind of make up for, I guess, his perceived inadequacy of only having the one name where it was something that other dragons were kind of looking down on him for, whereas Ugin, who is not so thin-skinned, was just like, yeah, no, Ugin's fine for me, thanks. <laughs> you know, and, and Nickel was like, my name's Nickel Bolas. So he came up with it himself, and Ugin just didn't give a damn, and still really doesn't, and so... Yeah, but we still didn't learn anything about the significance of it. Correct. Like, where did that come from? Correct, and it, it, maybe we will, maybe we won't, but I like the fact that we now know that Bolas was also a name that Nickel gave himself, um, but he did it because he's Nickel Bolas, and he feels small and inadequate. Right. And as as Ugin mentions at the beginning of the story, kind of in his lecturing process of, if you ever meet him, don't ever insinuate that he has ever been afraid in his entire life. I thought that was cool. I liked that a lot. And it was, it was a really good follow-up to last week and a good way to bridge into this week of just a reminder of who we saw what kind of a nickel we saw last week and who he's going to be continuing on into this week. Right. I, I will say my opinion, and you let me know what you think. I didn't okay. talk to you about this beforehand, but I, I somewhat felt like nickel was a little bit overblown when we saw him for the first time in this story because mm -hmm. he kind of just showed up and was like... Because, again, last week we saw him saying like, you know, those hunters killed our sister, and that's terrible. We need to stop them. And Ugin's like, hey, let's chill for a minute. They, they're they going to kill us just the same way that that they killed her. So we need to chill. You know, you were just trapped. Give yourself a minute to heal up. And it seemed like Bolas wasn't, or Nickel wasn't happy about it, but he acquiesced. And now we have this week where Ugin's like, okay, well, now we're in the world. Let's go find our siblings so we can meet up. And Nickel's like, well, what about the hunters? We have to kill the hunters. And it's like, didn't we just do this last week? Right. Like, why are you, why are you so over the top now? I felt like it was a little bit of a jump from last week of, you know, looking. I was looking forward to a steady climb, and then we got kind of in your face, like this is how I feel, and this is what I'm, what we're dealing with now. Okay, I mean, I would describe the characterizations of these characters as being, like, um, like, Ugin is your Charlie Bucket, you know, and then Nickel is, like, 
every other kid in the ch in the chocolate factory. He's like that obnoxious, you know. Um, and he just keeps falling in that chocolate river and filling up with blueberry juice, you know, because he keeps, you know, being inadequate. He wants <laughs> he wants a dead hunter and he wants it now. Yeah, exactly. That's fair. He's like every <laughs> annoying kid in that factory. And Ugin's just like, okay, well, you know, I'll go over here. It's cool. Busy lifting drinks, whatever. <laughs> you know, like. Uh. <laughs> oh, man, that's really fun. So I, I, I see what you're saying. You know, they, <laughs> they amped up the obnoxiousness for, I guess, the sake of, of. I don't know, because I still feel like there's a missing piece of the story that kind of lets us see how he goes from being all the obnoxious kids in the chocolate factory to Nicol Bolas, you know? Well, and I think we, we saw, at least in my opinion, we saw the kind of the beginnings of that this week where he, he seems to have gained some of his mental abilities because he, it seemed like he was able to mentally influence that one brother right. to kill the other brother. Um, which, I mean, come on. I mentioned foreshadowing earlier, didn't right. I? That's a... Uh, right, that but that still <clears throat> feels so out of the blue. So, I don't know. I feel well, like but there's... Again, don't... there's I'm, I'm hoping that there's going to be a piece of the story that, you know, we're, we'll come back to that part. Well, because I was a little shocked. And, I mean, I get it, right? I'm not upset by this, but it, it, it kind of... Took, I was taken aback for a second when Ugin says, oh, we arrive at the, um, the human settlement with Arcady Sabbath, and then we stay there for many years. It was like, holy crap, what? <laughs> many years? Yeah, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> so you're not going to tell us at all what happened during well, those years? Well, and again, we that heard... That might help us understand things a bit better. <laughs> well, don't forget, we heard from Ugin's perspective what happened during those yeah. many years, in that he trained with... Teju Ki, or not trained with, but studied with, and, and had discussions with, and, and, and did science with, if you will. Um, he did science. He did science. Uh, and, <laughs> and we didn't hear what Nickel did. Right. And so you're right. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe we will hear what Nickel did during that, those many years. Um, because this story jumped quite a bit. I mean, there were many years where they were training and hunting, and then there were many years that they stayed at the human settlement. And we'll see what that yields. What, um, if anything, if we get to learn anything from that, because now Nickel has gone off and Ugin has stayed back, but at least at first. Now it seems like Ugin's going to follow, and so maybe we'll get some more of that next week or the week after or what have you. We, we will have to see. Um... Again, it, it was it was a good dichotomy between the the brothers, if you will. Um, but then then getting to meet Palladium Moors and Chromium Ruel, uh, Chromium first, who is trying to study something in the lake. You know, insert Merit Lage meme here uh, because it was something large in the lake, which means it was larger than the dragons. So who knows? Uh, it's definitely a possibility, but. The fact that the dragons would have scared away Merit Lage, uh, who knows? Regardless, again, it's a meme for a reason. It, it's just, you know, a large creature in the lake. What could it be? It doesn't really matter. So it could it could just as well be Merit Lage. It, it, it's, that's as plausible as anything else, and it, it, it matters about as much as anything else that it could have been. Um, it's Loch Ness. <laughs> yeah, it's Nessie. It's, it's the Loch Ness Monster. Um, it could also be a leviathan, it could be an octopus, who the hell knows? Right. A kraken, it doesn't matter. But chromium is exploring the, the ancient creatures. Crab. <laughs> they're they are definitely not that big. Um, but well, they, fine. they're they're exploring or chromium is exploring the lake and Nickel and Ugin fly up and scare the thing away, and chromium is kind of cool and calm and, and very much the intellectual in the situation of just you know, hey, I'm trying to study right now. You guys are really harshing my mellow. You know, like, how about how about you go away? Oh, you want to learn how to hunt? Crazy nickel guy that just showed up? Cool, go talk to Palladia. She gets it. I don't care. 
leave me alone. And they did. They left Chromium alone. I doubt this is all we'll see of Chromium in these stories, but if it is, I think it'd be kind of funny. Just like, this is all Chromium cares about, so this is all you're getting. <laughs> just, just Chromium staring at a lake, you know, please go away, let me study the things in the lake. Um, hopefully we will get to see more, but I would think that about any and all of the uh, Elder Dragons, because they seem so cool. Um, and again, that's, that's a, a credit to the writing team. Kate and any of her uh, people assisting her, like Nick, um, that that they can make these Elder Dragon characters so interesting that, you know, even though there are, what, five, six of them, not counting Ugin and Nickel, you still want to hear more about each and every one of them because they have such... I don't even want to necessarily say fully fleshed out characters, but there's, there's enough there to keep at least me intrigued. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I I liked the Arcade Sabbath angle where you got to see... I mean, again, sorry, we, we talked about Chromium. Then they go and see Palladium Moors, who is just a hunter. I mean, she's a hunter, she's mean, she's a bully, as we saw with how she treats the brothers. Although, kind of all of the Elder Dragons were like, you guys are small. You know, like, that, yeah. that was just kind of what all of them were saying. They're like, who are you? You're small. You know, and even Ugin was like, I'm a little annoyed, right? Like, <laughs> Ugin, Ugin, like, kind of referenced it a bit. And he sure is no nickel, but he was a little annoyed by it, which I thought was was kind of a testament to the fact that, like, you know, that's that's what's going on. So, um... You guys are inadequate. <laughs> well, just in case you didn't hear me, you guys are inadequate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and we did... It was weird. They referenced the fact that Arcades Sabbath was called a dragon lord by the humans. I don't, I don't know what relevance that has. Obviously, it ties back to the dragon lords on Tarkir, but I don't, I don't fully get what purpose it might serve. That that it was referenced there. I, I'm not sure. Um, well, to me, that kind of means that there's, you know much there's sort of like a hidden meaning in this story in terms of like religions and or places i was gonna kick it over to you please go um ahead. where I, that kind of represents like christianity or um judaism uh to me in that you know uh they spent a lot of time talking about how um He's, he's teaching the humans how to be civilized. Yes, he's, and, he's protecting them, but also wants them to be better. Right. Also helping them learn. Yep. Um, and that's, of course, in contrast to Palladium Moors, who kind of, to me, sort of seemingly in this represents um, older religions, you know, uh, pagan... Um, you know, other polytheistic uh, religions where uh, when Christianity came about, uh, those other religions were looked down upon um, and people were basically um, shunned or told that they were lesser or, you know, um, that they were uncivilized. Um, that they didn't know the things they needed to know to be good people. Um, and to me, uh, Chromium, Chromium, right. Uh, kind of represents more of sort of Buddhism or, um, just sort of Asian culture during that same sort of time period or earlier, um, more, um, you know, uh, more advanced scientifically. Um, also, uh, the, the Zen-ness of meditation mm -hmm. and martial arts mm -hmm. and, um, just, uh, you know, not wanting to kill things. <laughs> um, you know? Uh, well, yeah, an interest in nature and, mm -hmm, and what that means mm -hmm. and the spirit. I mean, I don't know that it was fully said, but like the spirit of 
of nature and stuff like that. That's a very, mm -hmm. that seems like very uh, Asian influence there. Plus, you can't deny the influence um, of Asian culture in the names of the secondary characters or tertiary characters in this story, such as Taijin and Teju Ki, right? I, I, I'm not as versed in my Asian culture or my Eastern culture to tell you what you know, what, what that might have come from. But to me, that's the influence that I hear in those names. If you know more specifically, please let us know. As always, uh, the more educated I can become, the, the more appreciative I am. So please, I would love to hear it. But that's what I get from that, is that is the, the Eastern influence in those names as well, which, of course, goes along well with the Ojitai brood of the whole concept of... Um, the monks and you know the 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 ways of teaching um and they call him the great master and stuff like that so that that influence was always kind of there as well to to tie it back to the tarkir portion of the story which is the kind of the bookends the beginning mm -hmm. and the end of of each of these which I, I, is it cool i didn't cut you off right oh uh, well to, i do have a little bit please more to say on so it. i'm so sorry please no, go okay. um it so to kind of wrap that up, I think what they're kind of doing here is trying to parse out these different locations, these different, not necessarily races, but like... Factions. Yeah, factions maybe, um, to kind of give, give each one of them their own personality, hence the, the comment about the color wheel, and then... Um, also to kind of pull in our ability to reference real life and kind of kind of parse out to each of those groups um, a name or a culture or um, ideas or ideals <laughs> uh, and associated morals and things like that that might make sense for those different ones um, based on the knowledge that we have as human beings yeah. um, and how earth works um, <laughs> and uh, you know and just kind of maybe sort of working toward something like this where obviously this is quite a bit more complex and so if they're starting us out here with little groupings then eventually, once we understand those, eventually we can come back to something as big as this and still hopefully be able to understand it in a meaningful way. And of course, that is the basis of information that we will need for returning to Ravnica again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's why I love that this set is being done the way it's being done because we're getting such a strong backstory for the main villain plus based on the cards that are in this set as the stories go on it looks like we're going to get instances of Tezzeret and Liliana and Ajani and um, Sarkin and so we're going to get to see all of these other characters these main planeswalkers that that were a part of Nichols story going forward um, but I'm, I'm still looking forward to hearing more about the Elder Dragons. I know that we have a war coming, the Elder Dragon War. So I don't know how in-depth they're going to go with these stories if, uh, on that, if we're then also going to be getting to everything else. Um, because there are only six left, although these stories, I, I, unlike the Dominaria ones, I have not felt like any of these have been filler. I mean, there's only been two, right? But all of these have been advancing the plot, advancing information. None of these felt like they were floundering at all. I still feel like we are moving, mm -hmm. right? We're cruising, which I love. I love that feeling. I don't feel stagnant at all with these stories. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes, you know, works going forward. And it gives me more um, faith in it because I'm not sitting there going great we're stalled again, you know, <laughs> talking about whatever. We're like stopped dead For in our like tracks. Six stories in a row. <laughs> yeah. So 
We'll, we'll see where it goes. Speaking of stories, I wanted to once again reference, because I mentioned it last week, and I think it's still true this week, going strong. I love the storytelling that they're doing with these, where it's someone telling a story, and that's how we're hearing it. That's From a character's point of view. It's the second week it's happened, and it's amazing. I love it. It's working out super well. As we mentioned last week, I love the font change to show how that works out, especially this week where they had like that little break. There was like a paragraph or two of the story itself of the of the um, of the Ugin discussion, and then it broke back in with Yasova having a bad memory, and then went right back to the Ugin yeah. story again. So I thought that was great. That's kind of neat, yeah. I appreciated that greatly. So yeah, and I I think the placement of that is super important in terms of how we interpret um, her um, emotional reactions to certain things. Mm -hmm. um, it really helps us <clears throat> learn about her character specifically and what her triggers are, <laughs> I guess. Um, like what things specifically stand out to her as being particularly bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also appreciate it in terms of writing that it didn't, cut it up in the middle somewhere. Like it was kind of towards the beginning of when Ugin's story was being told mm -hmm. so that once we got into the meat of Ugin's story, we were not interrupted mm -hmm. until the end, right? The logical yeah. end of it. Because I would have, that probably would have bothered me a lot of the like, oh, come on. Like, you know, it's ramping up, ramping up. And then it cuts back to Yasova really quickly. But yeah. because it was right in the beginning and it was kind of the, the broad overarching like Ugin talking to um, the Ojitai clan or whatever, the, the fact that it cut away quickly didn't take anything away. In fact, added to it, if, any, if nothing else. So I like that quite a bit. Okay. We have, like I said, six more weeks. We will be here for all six of those weeks here on JAR because that's what we do. Um, that's what we do. <laughs> and, and, no, and, and I mean, that, that sounded like, you know, we're um, better about down it. on it, but no, I, I'm enjoying these like stories for quite a bit. better or worse, yeah. we'll show up. <laughs> Which in some sets of stories had totally been the case. So far, um, so far I'm liking this one. So. so with all that being said, I want to, as we always do, thank you guys so much for watching another episode of JAR here on Geek For All, where we got to, and hopefully you guys do as well, let us know your opinions of everything that we've said. Yes. And anything that we might not have said that you think is worthy of mentioning yes, in the comments please. down below. We've been seeing some great ones in the past few weeks, so keep great. it up. If there's something we didn't think of, please mention it. Definitely. Definitely. But, and that, combined with what we just did, is examples of all of us showing off our... <laughs> Hashtag Vorthos Pride. That was really broken up in a weird way of doing it, but I got it I in know. there. Sorry. That's uh, why I left at you. Yeah, well, I deserved it. Uh, but <laughs> thank you guys once again. Uh, this has been Jar here on Geek For All. I have been Joe. And I'm Amy. Guys, it would really help us if you click that subscribe button. <laughs> follow us. Uh, you'll find out when all these videos come out. We'll be back next week. And as we always say... In whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.